Alright, so the intro to this video is pretty dark, but what cuts through the dark? The light. And today, I'm going to be talking about an LED lighting option for the Harley Davidson Lowrider S. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the Moons MC tail light with integrated signals, and we're going to be talking about the Moons MC handlebar mount LED lights. Now this video has been a long time coming, I've had these parts in my garage for several months now, and I just haven't had time to install them till now. Keep in mind that this is going to be a detailed install video, so I've created YouTube chapters so you don't have to watch it all the way through. For example, if you're just interested in the front end of the bike, you can skip to that chapter using the YouTube chapters below. At the end of the video, I'll do a real life demo and let you know what I think of the products and if I'd purchase them again. And with all that said, let's get into this install. Okay guys, before I start tearing into the bike, I just kind of wanted to give you an idea what kind of parts I chose to use for this swap. Um, on the front end of the bike, I'm going to replace the uh, regular indicator lights with these low profile Moons MC LED indicators. Um, the construction on these seems pretty solid and I like that they uh, tinted the plastic covering that covers those LED lights. It gives it a little more of a blacked out look. and. Um, these are about 70 bucks on their website. Keep in mind I'm going to have to be doing a little bit of light soldering to install these on the front end. So if cutting into wires is something you're a little squeamish about, um, I think I can walk you through it on this video. It's really not that hard, but if you still feel uncomfortable, uh, maybe debate picking another option. From there, let's move on to the rear end of the bike, which this is awesome because this is a full plug and play system, no cutting or soldering required. So first off, you're going to have your Moons MC low profile LED tail light, and this is version 3 of the light. And what this is going to do is it's going to integ integrate your indicators, both right and left, and your running light and tail light all into this little piece. Um, and it's a little slimmer than the stock piece, and the stock piece is about like that thick, so it also just cleans up the rear end of your bike. Um, I also chose to get the Moons MC base plate. This is not a requirement. You can use a stock base plate. I just got this because it's blacked out and the stock plate is chrome, but the stock plate will work just fine with this light if you don't want to go that route. And I also got the Moons MC wiring harness, which is a must if you want this to be a plug and, plug and play system. Um, the light itself is about 110 bucks. The base plate's around 50, I believe, and the wiring harness is around 55, I believe. So. Um, some things I do want to point out is on the wiring harness, you're going to have your left and right um, indicators, and you're going to have your running light and tail light. And this is the end that plugs into the motorcycle. On the other end, you're going to notice that this is a mail end, and this is the end that plugs into the housing on the tail light. Um, the reason I point this out is because if you look at the tail light, you're going to notice that these are also mail. So um, when I was first looking at this, I was like, how are those going to plug into each other? But what you need to remember is there's another piece inside the stock base that you're going to reuse on this base. And that piece is the piece that these actually all plug into. So I just wanted to clear that up in case anybody else out there had that same confusion. And um, with that said, guys, I can hear the wind whipping outside. It's starting to move my garage door which is one of the reasons I'm in here doing this video and not out trying to ride. So um, if there's a little background noise during this video, that's what's going on. And with all that said, let's get into this. Okay guys, the rain is coming down pretty hard and pounding my garage. So if you're wondering what that noise is, that's what it is, so just bear with me. Um, we gotta start this out by first taking the seat off and then taking the bags and the sissy bar off. Um, uh, if you don't have bags on your bike or a sissy bar, you don't have to worry about this step. But if you remember my bag video, and again, if you haven't checked it out, go check that out. Um, these bags hook in to the bike using the bolt holes that hold the fender on originally. And the sissy bar hooks into the same, same bolts. So you need to take that off so you can get to the old wiring harness, harness which runs under the fender and we're going to replace with that Moons MC wiring harness to hook everything into the new Moons light. So um, also you'll remember that uh, these light um, relocation kit came with the Viking bags when I got it because the stock lights actually plug in right here which is why 
you have to move them if you're gonna run a bag because the bag will bump into them. Um, and so these will be completely gone and we'll have that Slimmer Moons um, light. You can tell these are a little thicker and a little darker tint. As far as my plate goes, I think I'm gonna leave it straight up and down for now just because I think it might actually turn out all right with the sissy bar. I know a lot of people are laying them down, but this might actually be one of the exceptions just to leave it up. It might look all right with that sissy bar. So let's get into this. I'm gonna tear all this off first and then we'll get into the wiring and electrical portion of the install. Okay, so we got the seat off, we got the bags off, we got the sissy bar off, and this is where you're gonna see the stock wiring harness come out and plug in. So you got your left and right blinkers and you got your um, brake and running light. So that's the piece we're gonna replace. Um, it's kind of just taped against the bottom of the fender. So we're gonna take the fender off and we're gonna rip that tape off or that, that sticky tape off so we can remove that. And then we're gonna clean it up good and put the other wiring harness in because it also has double-sided sticky tape. Kinda looks like right there, that 3M tape on the back of it and it just sticks right on the bottom side of that fender. So we wanna make sure it's really clean um, so that doesn't come off uh, before we stick the new one on. So before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and take this license plate and these lights off um, the bracket and remove them, so moving on. Okay, so I got the blinkers separated from the um, relocation bracket that came with the bags. Um, the original way this was set up was this whole piece right here was actually running out of this and a bolt was coming from the inside in it to hold it up, so. Um, just so you understand how the stock version was set up. Um, so I had to extend that wire in order to move it from that location to this location. So if you follow this wire, it runs all the way down this and it comes right out here and it's this wire and it comes into here and this is where it plugs into the bike, this little clip right here. And the same with the other side is that clip right there. So it comes right up here and runs into that clip. So you can just pop those clips out. So where I'm doing the front LEDs as well, and I'm gonna have to solder, I have to disconnect the battery. And to do that, you come over here, you take these two Allen keys out, and you remove this. It just kind of has a little grommet that sticks onto a little metal spot here and you just pull it out and I'll show you that in a minute and then the negative battery terminal is just right there you can reach it you can undo it and take it off and make sure it's not touching before you do any electrical work so all you got to do is unplug the negative but if you're not doing any soldering and you're just doing the tail light you don't even really have to disconnect the battery just make sure you disconnect all these so um, I got one hand here so So right there, it just has a little clip. You push it and you can pull that out. Same with this one. You push it, pull it out. And then this is the brake light and the running light. And I'm trying to figure out how it comes out. There we go. So this little pulls back and then you pull it out. So you were totally disconnected from the battery at this point and um, there's no need to undo that negative if you're just doing the tail light. So when I 
did my bags and I extended those wires, um, they look something like this. So I had to cut them and then extend the wire and then I soldered the stock plug back on so that I could plug it back into the bike. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just kind of cut them again just so I can just pull that wire straight out uh, or pull that indicator straight out without any any issue because this won't be on the back and I can just pull them right off and I have no intention on using them again. So all this is gonna go away because the new wiring harness all runs through this one cable and it's gonna come out this one hole. So after cutting off those stock plugs again, here we are pulling out the left and right indicator cables on both the left and right side of the bike. After we get this done, we're going to go ahead and remove that license plate bracket that came with the bags, and we're not going to reuse that, so we can just toss it to the side when we're done. Okay, now that we have the um, rear indicators removed and the um, Viking bag indicator relocation kit removed, um, I've made the decision at this point just to remove the entire fender um, and that is so that I can really get under there and clean it up really good before I put that 3M tape with the new harness on there. I just don't want it coming off. But before we do that, we need to get, um, I'm going to take off the stock tail light and show you that piece that everything's going to plug into. Okay, from here you see that piece I was talking about. Um, this just has a little clip on it that's holding the light on. I'll pull it off real quick. So there's the, the stock light. I'll give you a comparison here of them side by side. There's the stock light. And there is your aftermarket light. So. It's pretty significant, I'd say. And then remember, you got three wires on here and there is only one on here. Um, this plug is the same as this plug. So the white plug is gonna go right in that same hole. And then those other two plugs, left and right, are gonna go in these that are currently being unused. Now this is from the harness that plugs into the bike. So again, we just unplug that. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna remove that um, screw right there. It's gonna take the whole base out and it's also gonna detach this from the base. And when we screw in the other base, we're just gonna uh, put this piece on with the other base so that we have all those connections. Okay, now that I got the light off, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fender. And to do that, I'm just gonna remove these two T45 bolts on both sides and it should just slide off. So just remember that you have this piece um, behind here and you have one on both sides. So I gotta snag the other one and that's where these bolts hook into. So I'm just gonna remove that so it doesn't fall off in the middle of this. Also, um, make sure you got a place to put your fender um, when I get it off, I'm just gonna flip it over and set it right on the sheet. And then I'm not scratching it up while I'm cleaning out the inside of it and taking off that sticker. Once you get the fender completely removed, you can go ahead and remove that old stock wiring harness. I'm also going to take the fender mounting brackets off completely just so I'm not scraping up the side of the fender while I'm trying to clean up the inside and the outside. Another thing I decided to do while I had the fender off was remove the reflectors because the bags cover them up anyway. I did this using a piece of fishing line because it doesn't scratch up the paint. I then took some Gooby Gone after peeling off whatever I could of my fingers and removed 
the material that was left behind. You can see that I used some caulking tools that are made out of plastic and don't scrape paint easily to help me do this. Um, keep in mind that this isn't a quick process so don't be trying to do this when you're in a hurry because you're just going to get frustrated. It takes a while to get all that old adhesive off especially when you're talking about the adhesive on the inside of the fender which I also removed because I wanted a nice clean surface to stick the new wiring harness on and I didn't want it coming off later on so I really took my time to get all this adhesive off, off and I suggest you do the same just don't do it when you're in a hurry now we can start working on getting everything put back together okay guys I found it to be pretty easy to get this little piece off if you'll notice there's a little square right here that matches up with the square on the front of the piece and then there's these two little knobs that go into those two little holes right there and all I did is I flipped it around and using a punch and a hammer I just uh, lightly tapped them out through those holes and it popped right out so on the new one you'll see that it's got that same setup so you just line those up and push it in to secure it. And there we go. Nice and tight. Same thing back here. And it's good to go. Let's put it on the bike. Okay, from here you're just going to take your new base and you'll notice it has this little lip right here. It's going to fit right on this lip on the inside of the fender and then you're going to line up the Phillips screw and just screw it in and attach that new base. Okay, from here we're going to put in the new wiring harness. One thing I want to point out is when you plug it into the light housing, make sure you take all the slack out of the line before you tape it down to the bottom of the fender because you don't want to get to the other end of the bike where you plug it into the bike and not have enough length there to get it plugged in. So I took all the slack out I could before I stuck it to the actual bottom side of the fender. Okay, from here you can put the fender back on the mounting brackets. Just make sure that when you're running the screw that goes through the fender and into the bracket from the inside of the fender, that you put some Loctite on that screw. Um, you'll also notice that I put the plates in there and I took one of the old screws that held the fender on before I put the bags on and used it to hold those plates. Um, when I was taking it off the bike, I realized it would have been easier to have something holding those plates and that fender more solidly together. Um, so there's less chance of things moving around and scratching the paint. So just something to think about when you're taking it off the bike as well. Now you can just put the fender back on the bike and put back in the four T45 screws. And these ones you don't need Loctite on because you're going to be throwing your leg over the bike right at this point every time you get on it. So it's going to be pretty obvious if those are coming loose if you're paying attention. And I noticed the factory didn't have Loctite on those bolts, probably for the same reason. Here's where it all starts coming together. You just need to plug in your light. And the only thing I really need to add on this at this point is that the wire with the green color is going to be your left indicator light and the wire with the brown color is going to be your right indicator light.
I'll just take the other end of the harness and plug it in like we unplugged it. And keep in mind, even if you get the indicators wrong and the left ends up being the right or vice versa, you can just swap these two plugs and correct it. At this point, if you don't have bags, just slap your seat on and you're done. If you do have bags, just make sure you put some Loctite on those bolts before you reinstall them. Okay, it's a new day. The rain has stopped and the sun is shining, at least for now. The rear tail light is completely done. And now I'm gonna be switching up to the front indicator lights and replacing the stock bulbs with some Moon's MC low profile LED lights. And just to give you a picture of how this looks before, there's the stock ones. This is the low profile light and they actually mount right into the uh, mirror bolt right here. So the mounting is going to be super simple. Um, the longest part of this is going to be um, soldering the wire and putting shrink wrap on it and making it look um, as close to stock as we can. So without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, so remember we're going to be cutting and soldering, so we need to disconnect that negative battery terminal on the battery. And to do that, you just take out the Allen keys and then pull it off that little metal grommet. And then just inside, you'll see the negative terminal. You just disconnect that terminal. And then make sure you tuck it away so it doesn't accidentally move and touch some metal while you're in the middle of making this install happen. From here, you're going to remove your mirror and detach your stock indicator. And just keep in mind, this is where you're going to install your new Moon's MC indicator as well, just using that bolt. And then you got to make a decision on where you want to cut your wire. Just make sure you leave yourself room enough to work. You don't want it being too short. Or if you make a mistake and you have to cut it shorter, you just want to keep that in mind. So you'll notice on your stock light, you're going to have three wires, a black, a purple, and a blue wire. And on your Moon's MC light, you're only going to have two wires, which is your black and your red wire. That third wire, that blue wire, is your running lights. So if you hook this up without connecting that blue wire, you're not going to have running lights. You're just going to have a signal light. So in order to get your running lights, you're going to have to wire in an inline converter. To be completely honest with you guys, I forgot to order some converters when I decided to make this video, but I wanted to get it out. Um, this is a set by Joker Machine that I've used in the past. They're $10.95 for the pair, and I used them on a Harley-Davidson Roadster, and they work just fine. I had no issues with them. The other thing I like about this product is they have a diagram that comes with it and if you just follow it, it works perfectly. So let's say today this is the Moon's MC light right here. All you would do is wire the black wire to the Harley Davidson black wire and solder it. And then you would take the red wire and you would solder it to the Harley Davidson purple wire and you'd leave the blue wire blank and this the, doing it this way you're only going to have your turn signal and your hazard lights there's going to be no running lights if you wire it this way on the flip side if you have the converter you would just wire it the black wire the same you would solder that and you would take the purple wire or the red wire and solder it to in this case the orange wire and then you would just match up the purple and blue and now you will have your running turn signal lights and your hazard lights and it'll all work. I plan on getting this later and um, soldering it in but for now I know I'm just going to have my turn signals. And with that said let's get on with this install by starting to strip these wires back. If you're unlucky like me and you don't get a perfect strip you can use a razor blade to cut the plastic back farther. Then I just took a pair of needle nose pliers and I rolled the plastic back so that I could cut it with some wire cutters. And here I am just cutting off that extra plastic with the wire cutters. Here I am just sizing a piece of shrink fit and pushing it over the wires so that we can pull it over them when we're done soldering. Keep in mind that this piece is just going to cover all the wires but that each individual wire needs its own piece of shrink fit so that no exposed wires are touching.
And here we're just stripping back the Moon's MC wires so that we can prepare to solder them together with the motorcycle wires. And here I am just playing around with some shrink fit again. As a side note, make sure you put your shrink fit on before you put the wires together or you have to cut them to get the shrink fit back on, which is a mistake I've made plenty of times in the past. This bigger piece is just going to cover all the wires and then I'm going to put some smaller shrink fit on each individual wire to ensure that those wires aren't touching. And now you're just going to weave the wires together with the motorcycle wires with the black wire going to the black wire and the red wire going to either the single inverter wire or the purple wire depending on whether or not you're wiring this to have your running lights working. Now you're just going to take your soldering tool and solder the wires together. This is a tool I picked up from Harbor Freight and I like it because it gets hot really quick. I used to have one of the pen style ones and it worked and it'll work for this process but they're a little slower to heat up. And before I heated up the shrink wrap, I decided to test the light and it worked, but I probably should have did this before I even soldered. And then I decided to just clip the blue wire because I'm going to have more length when my inverters come in and I hook up the running lights. And now it's just a game of moving the shrink tubing around and trying to get it where you want it before you heat it up and it shrinks down on that wiring. One thing I do want to point out is make sure you don't start moving the heat shrink tubing around until after the solder points have cooled down because they will try to shrink down on that wire before you get them right where you want them. Now you can just take your heat gun and shrink down that tubing on that wiring. Um, I will say that a heat gun is a lot quicker, but I have seen people do this with a lighter or even a simple blow dryer. It just takes longer. Okay, now just install your new Moon's MC light using the stem on the mirror and bolt it on. I will say that it was initially a little tight against the brake lever housing and I didn't like the way it was fitting, so I just took a thicker washer and put it in between the light and the brake housing and it gave it just enough room that it that it sat a little more flush and it worked fine. Now if you want to hide some of that wiring now's a good time to loosen up your electrical housing and shove it into your handlebars. Personally when my joker converters arrive and I wire up the running lights I probably won't be shoving as much wire into the handlebars because I'm running out of room. I'll probably just do a really good shrink wrap job and use some automotive wrap just to clean it up. Hey guys, the install is done and this is my thoughts on the Moon's MC rear tail light with integrated signals. Um, in this video, Jackie was following me in the 
Jeep and she did mention that whenever I turned either right or left um, the light just looked like it was flashing she couldn't really tell which way I was turning she said she can kind of predict which way I was turning but it kind of just washed out on her and um, she also I also had her watch this video she said it's, it wasn't as bad as it is in this video it was a little more blobby for lack of a better term and in real life it was a little clearer but she still said she had a hard time determining which way I was turning um, so that's something to keep in mind um, would I purchase this light again yes aesthetically I think it looks awesome I think it looks really cool in the daytime and it doesn't um, appear to wash out as bad in the day as it does at night um, but I am debating getting a second set of LED turn signals that I can mount on my bags just so it's more clear for people behind me which way I'm turning. switch into the front end of the bike which are the Moons MC LED handlebar mount indicators and again keep in mind I don't have the running lights on at this point because I'm waiting on those joker converters and once I get those I'll install them and have the run lights going and we'll be good to go um, in this portion of the video Jackie's leading the way in the Jeep and she said that it was much easier to see which way I was turning um, with these lights activated. I mean, obviously she was making the turn before me, but she said it was just more clear um, as she watched me ride behind her. Um, with that said, I will say in my garage, I felt like the stock lights were actually brighter than these LED lights, which surprised me. But after watching this video, after taking this ride, I realized they're plenty bright for me. Um, there's some turns that Jackie takes in this video where she gets pretty far in front of me and you can still see me in the distance with the light activated so I'm plenty happy with how bright these lights are um, and once I get those converters installed and my running lights are going um, I think I'll be 100% happy so in this case when I purchase this product again yes I, I like the aesthetics of it it looks really streamlined and at night, I feel like they put out um, they put out plenty of light for my liking.
Hey guys, that's it for this one, and I probably put more into this video than I'd like to admit. But I enjoy the process, and I hope I'm making valuable content for you. So if you are, do me a favor and make sure you like this video, and more importantly, subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas you want to shoot at me, feel free to hit me up, and I'll see what I can do. With all that said, this is Nick with Idle Up, and keep up.